Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome to Fail Friday, the series in which I fix your baking fails, my baking fails, or I tell you how to avoid a fail. And let me preface this by saying that I have made a lot of things with chocolate. I've used lots of different types of molds. I've used white chocolate, dark chocolate, anything that you can think of, and I have never messed up so many times in a row. So if you've struggled with making this breakable heart, or maybe you're going to make one of these for the first time, I have some tips for you so that you can avoid doing it as many times as I did. So let's talk about melting your chocolate and dyeing your chocolate. So firstly, when you are melting your chocolate, you do want to make sure that you do it in short spurts if you're going to do it in the microwave. I highly suggest that if you're just starting out with chocolate making, that you do it on a double boiler, especially if you're not using something like candy melts and you're using white chocolate or dark chocolate, you just avoid scorching a lot more easily. So yeah. That didn't work because the chocolate was way too thin. So I just decided to try it again. I reheated the chocolate. I did add a little bit more coloring as well, which I used some fat dispersible coloring. You wanna make sure it's specifically for chocolates or else your chocolate is going to seize up. Now here I was pretty positive, but there were still a lot of pieces missing. So I decided to try it again. Well, remember earlier when we talked about scorching, because I was so impatient from having to do this so many times, I put it into the microwave for way too long and I ended up with all these little kind of black bits in the chocolate. But at this point, I hit that wall where I just wanted to get it done. So I tried again and I tried to make it a lot thicker this time, but nope. It kept falling apart because I'd already ruined the chocolate. So now I decided to use a good quality dark chocolate and you'll notice I used flakes. I just find that the flakes melt so much more evenly so that's why I opted to use that. This time around, I decided to do a triple layer of chocolate so the chocolate is quite, quite thick. Now different molds are gonna react differently. This one, you really, really need to make sure that you put a lot of chocolate on the bottom. Whereas I was directing all of my chocolate to the edges because with every other mold, that's what I've done. So it finally worked that time. Then you go ahead and put whatever items you would like down on your cake board. Now you could do two sides of the chocolate heart. I decided to just go with the one side because my chocolate was so thick already. Now I am brushing some dry luster dust just on top there. It gives it a really, really beautiful sheen, whatever you're using. The other mistake that I made though was I didn't use gloves when handling this chocolate. So you can see my fingerprint right there, which I'm having to finesse out with my brush quite a bit so that we don't see that anymore. Now, if you were making two heart halves, what you would want to do is you'd want to put them both on the back of a hot pan to place them together so that you don't have a seam or anything showing. I actually thought that looked really, really nice plain, but I'm just going to add a little bow and some pearls on top. To make my bow, I'm just making my long rectangle, and then I'm taking this kind of mold here, and it's actually a sequin mold, but I wasn't really going for sequins. I just wanted a bit of a texture to the bow. I'm using fondant today because that's what I have on hand, but I think modeling chocolate would be a great choice for this, just to keep within that chocolate scheme. To attach all the pieces of the bow, just use a little bit of water. I've seen a lot of really cool ideas with these breakable hearts. Some people like to leave them plain. Some people like to write sayings on the front with fondant or with royal icing. And I also have seen a lot of cool things go inside of these hearts as well. I've always thought it'd be really cool to maybe propose to somebody with this or you could put money or other small gifts inside. I'm just going to add a little bit of gold splatter to this and to add any gold splatter to anything really, you just need to thin out some luster dust and vodka or right now I'm using my water activated paint palette and just watering it down a bit. Now I'm going to add on these pearls and my main reason for this is actually to cover up some holes that occurred. Again, another fail. The reason those holes showed up is because I didn't make sure to pat down that mold before I placed it into the fridge. So whenever you're filling any types of molds with chocolate, you do wanna give it a good tap to make sure you get rid of all of those air bubbles.
I'm going to attach my hammer to the breakable heart, but you could easily have this separate as well. I'm just using a little bit of tool. Now let's get into the pricing of these hearts. Now really, the majority of the pricing is going to the fact that this is a lot of chocolate and I would only make these as a custom order. And I say the starting price at $55 because it really depends on what is inside of your breakable heart. My final thoughts on the breakable heart is that the toughest part is the unmolding process. So when you're doing it, you wanna make sure that you're very, very careful. And the real trick to this is to make sure that the chocolate is nice and thick. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys.